Dear friends, today I am going to speak a few words on China division of India and whether Nehru was responsible as claimed by Joshiban Singh. We all know that uh, Mr. Singh has been expelled by BJP and BJP details the idea of secular Jina so much that even Adbani was in trouble when he claimed so. But dear friends, we should explore and we should not be afraid of facing the truth from the history. Yes, if you look at the Indian history after 1930, when Jinnah started demanding Pakistan based on two nation theory, yes, there is no doubt Jinnah was a communal man. Yes, there was no doubt that Jinnah is the man responsible for genocide of the Hindus and maybe Muslims in India. So why? So why not Jinnah should be called a communal? But if you read the history with a sublime depth, if you read history, from the formation of Congress till the point Jinnah was sort of forced to opt for Pakistan, I would say in 1930, then you get an entirely different history and you may find that Mr. Singh was not wrong at all. Indeed, when I read the history and examine the facts on the ground, there is no doubt Jinnah is one of the misunderstood men in South Asia. Let Take a flashback on 1896 when Congress was formed. Jinnah was one of the first few members of Congress. He has been working with Hindu leaders like Gokhale, Tilak, Srendunath Banerjee. But then, all of a sudden, why Jinnah decided to join in Muslim League? Now, remember, Muslim League was formed in 1906. And Jinnah was invited there. But Jinnah said he cannot join League because to him League smells, you know, to my word, too Islamic. And he detests the idea of Orthodox Islam because he himself was British educated. You know, he was at, nine, at the age of 19, he was the youngest by at law and he used to eat pork, he used to drink and there was nothing Islamic about him. His all clientele was Persians, rich bankers. And only thing he did for Muslims probably till 1910 was basically to approve the work of property. But most of the time he was working as a social reformer. Indeed, he was the man instrumental for stopping child marriage in India at a time when even our so-called famous social reformer like Ravindranath Tagore was basically getting his daughter married at a much younger age, even if I understand that theoretically Tego was opposed to child marriage. But the fact is, Gina was a secular social reformer all along during that time. But, and not only that, he detested the idea of joining League. So he did not join the Muslim Leagues in 1906 when it was joined. He joined in 1913 and then he became a president in 1916. But he said the League should work with Congress for freedom of India till 1930. Now, his distance from Congress started with Gandhi. Why so? It may sound strange, but it is true that Jinnah did not like Khilafat movement and the fact that Gandhi started supporting Khilafat movement which Jinnah thought a movement of Muslim fundamentalists who wants to clog back the Islamic society to the medieval age because Jinnah was a secular and modern man. Now Gandhi started supporting notorious Ali brothers, Bolona Ali and Sokot Ali who instigated Hindu-Muslim riots in Malabar and in Noakhali. After that, Gandhi understood his mistake, but hey, Jinnah told Gandhi that, Mr. Gandhi, if you take this step of supporting Khilafat movement, ultimately it will be a Hindu-Muslim riot, and that's what happened, and he told it on because So Jinnah, in national shift form, realized that Congress is not thinking about uh, the minority. They're actually into the game of minority pampering, which till today they are. And he realized that very honestly and he was one of the first person to realize the Hindu leadership in so-called secular Congress will be recognizing only the fundamentalist Muslim as the leader of the Muslim community which is detrimental to the progress of Muslim society. But till 
he did not think of a Pakistan. The point he started thinking about the Pakistan after his 14 point demand was rejected. And if you look at very carefully, today in India, we provide not secular laws, but the Muslim civil laws for the Muslim. And that was the basis of the 14 point demand. But that time Congress did not admit it. And the, the reason the debate started about the fact that Nehru is responsible is because Nehru wanted a strong federal structure. That is, there will be more power in the hand of Delhi and less power in the hand of states, which Jinnah opposed in his 14 plan. And if Nehru would have agreed to that kind of dominion status of all the Indian state, perhaps there would not have been any Pakistan. It is clear because Jinnah told the first thing that he was pissed off by the Nehru is on the ground that in Nehru's uh, basically the thing that he drafted on the Indian federal state on the dominion status, it too much federalistic, that is, it is too much holding too much power on the hand of Delhi, which is not good for a multi racial monthly ethnic country like India. Therefore, Mr. Singh is right. There is no doubt it is Nehru and his, I would say, aspiration for power which has distanced Jinnah and he was kind of a force to corner Pakistan. So, history is never simple. We understand that Jinnah has his share of blame for the genocide that took place in South Asia, but at the same time, Congress leaders, especially Nehru, cannot be absconded that he was not at all responsible. Yes, he was. The Congress and Nehru was very much responsible for division of India and more than China, to be honest.